Hi, Pastor Diego with Garden of Christ Ministries. Um, today's message is called, The Funeral Has Been Cancelled. Um, we're going to read out of uh, John chapter 11. Um, I was surfing uh, YouTube, obviously, if you're watching this. Uh, you know we have a YouTube channel. I'm surfing on uh, YouTube and just kind of looking at praise and worship songs and uh, etc. And I came across this uh, site or this, this thing and it said uh, the that the funeral has been canceled, and they show these uh, crazy Christians out there, you know, dancing and praising God because uh, I don't know who was that, that died, but they had died, and they were saved, and they were going to heaven. And the Lord started to deal with me about that. He said, you know, uh, at the same time I was, I was coming to the book of John and reading, and he said, you know, I've canceled the funeral and, and your life. And so I want to get into um, John... Chapter 11, I'm going to, like I've said before, you got to read the whole chapter for you to really grasp, but for the sake of time, I'm going to skip around. And um, so let's catch up. Uh, so here, Jesus is already in the ministry. He's already doing his miracles, and um, he has a friend named Lazarus. And now, Lazarus' sisters come and tell Jesus, uh, Jesus, Lazarus is, is really sick, and we'd like you to come out and lay hands on him because Jesus is doing miracles. And Jesus says something in verse 4. He says, um, when Jesus heard that, he said, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, I'm not trying to ruin the story for you guys, but guess what? Lazarus dies. I don't, you can say, wait a minute, Jesus just said he's not going to die. Well, he did die. And in case you guys don't know this, I don't want to spoil the story for you, but Lazarus comes back to life. Or else my sermon wouldn't be called, The Funeral Has Been Cancelled. You'd have to name it something else, like, The Funeral Is Going To Be Cancelled, But Then Lazarus Never Came Back, So Maybe Next Time. <laughs> so I'm not trying to ruin it, but if you read the title, then you know that Lazarus comes back to life. But, so here it is. Lazarus dies, and Jesus could have shown up a little earlier, but... He stays back. He hangs out where he was at for an extra couple days. And verse 11 says, Then these things he said, uh, one after that, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. They don't know yet. If he's talking to the disciples, they don't know yet that Lazarus died. The disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get well. However, Jesus spoke of death, but not that they thought he was speaking about taking a rest and sleep. In other words, he was saying that he sleeps, in other words, he's dead. And they were thinking, oh, you know, he's just saying he needs to rest, he has the flu, something like that. And, you know, he rests, he'll get over it. But Jesus was actually talking about that. Isn't that kind of strange that Jesus said in the beginning, oh, he's not going to die, and now he's dead? And he's like, you know, almost sounds like one of those preachers that, you know, say, I'm going to lay hands on you, and you're going to get healed, and then you don't get healed. And it's like, well, you know, it's God's will. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> you said I was getting healed, and I'm still limping. You know, and they try. So it almost sounds like Jesus is saying, "You're not gonna die. You're just sleeping." You know, it's like. But so Jesus walks in. He's walking up, and of course, all the sisters uh, of Lazarus and all the friends are are dead. Pick it up at 19. And many of the Jews had jo joined the women and Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother, because the brother's dead. Now, here's another sign that I was thinking about. You know how like when you have a friend or you tell someone, hey, my brother's in the hospital or such and such is going on, and oh man, we got to go see him because, you know, he just found out he got cancer or something like that. And, and then most of the time they don't show up. Most of the time, you know, it's kind of like, oh, well, tell him I'm using my prayers, you know, and that kind of deal. And, but at the funeral, like everybody breaks out in tears. Like they're like, oh my God, dear brother, was such a man of God. And you got tears and you're crying and you're like, you didn't even come when I told you. Right? I mean, that's just how it happens. So that's what's happening right now. Everyone's showing up. They're all patting their brother, the sisters on the back and friends. And everybody's crying. So here comes Jesus. And Mary sees him. And hears that he's there. And she goes out to him. And we'll pick it up in 21, verse 21. Now Mary said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, that whatever you ask of God, He'll give you. And Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. 
Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? This, verse 27, verse 26 and 27, is the whole thing that we need to get in our souls and in our lives. He says, do you believe this? She says to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. Do you believe this, that I can bring back the dead? Do you believe that I can heal? Do you believe that I can forgive sins? Do you believe all these things? And because she says yes, something great is about to happen in her life. Something great can happen in our lives. See, a lot of us have made some mistakes. We've been the bad brother, bad sister, bad son, daughter, whatever. And when you make a mistake, drugs, going to jail, affairs, whatever happens. People write you off. People write you off and say, man, that guy's a loser. That guy's a drug addict. Don't let him in my house. He's a thief. He's this. He's that. He can't get a job. It's not going to happen. So you're essentially almost dead in these people's eyes. Like, that's the way you're always going to be. You're always going to be just you know, a, a dishwasher, jumping from job to job. And, oh, now what are you doing nowadays? Kind of deal when they, when they run into you. You know, and, and then they run into you, you know, they're, they're holding their wallet and stuff because of your past, because of your mistake. You know, you knock on their door and you're like, oh man, your cousin Carlos is here. And you're like putting stuff away. Oh, hold on, man. You know, <laughs> so, oh no, that's not a flat screen. No, uh, that, that's my neighbor. He just let me use it, you know, just today. I got to take it back though. It won't be here later. Oh, um, <laughs> this ain't a Rolex. No, no, my, my, I just put that on there with my wife's. Uh, nail polish, just messing around. It's, it's just cheap, you know. That's, you don't want, you know, to stuff away. You know, because they look at you like you're, you're, you're dead to them. You've died. You, you've shown stuff in your past, and that's just the way it is. They don't want you around. They, 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 they keep throwing that in your face all the time, or, or, or every time there, there's, you know, what's Carlos up to now? What's going on with him? You know, oh, he's back in jail. Or, you know, or when you do get out, you know, oh, how long this time? You have that. They, 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 they put that on you. You know, oh, is she pregnant yet? You know, that kind of deal. And Jesus was saying to her, if you believe, if you know who I am, I can change that for you. Not just physically, but spiritually. Here, we're going to see that he does it physically. So, verse 39, here he meets up with the others. Yes, I said, so, uh, let, let's jump back, 34. And he said, where have you laid him? So he, he's talking to his sister, and, and, and everybody's crying. He goes, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And, and Jesus wept. Now, a lot of times, we, the pastors will say that Jesus wept because he had such a heartbreak over Lazarus dying. And I, when I was young, I used to think, okay, you know, the pastor said that, and I believe it. But you know what? Not if we go back to the scripture and read it more, because he said in the very beginning, he sleeps. He's not, he's, he said when they first told him that he was sick, he said, this is the glorified God. And he told the disciples, he's only asleep. So he always knew that he was going to pass away and that he was going to come back and resurrect his life, resurrect him from the dead. Why was he crying? He was crying because of the people around him mourning for this guy, not understanding who Jesus was. Not understanding, right here, you have the Son of God who was there when God created everything. Who was there when he, he, he saw the flood and he, and, and he saw the, 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 the Red Sea depart. He saw these things. He was there. You have him in the midst of you. And yet you're mourning over somebody. And that's why he, it, it tugs at his heart. Verse 36, then Jesus said, or then the Jews said, see how he loved them? And some of them said, and isn't it just like people? Watch, let's read 37. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Isn't that just like people? I mean, it's like, let's say that you're one of, those, one of those ones that made mistakes and now you're going to church and now you're trying hard and you're doing things. Isn't it just like the church or someone in there to point that out to you? 
I mean, you're, 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 you have your past and whatever, and now you're, you're trying to do good, and you're on the fence, you're hammering and fence together, and you hit your hand, and you're like, ah, oh, and you say something you shouldn't have said. Isn't that the first thing that the world does, or someone does, once you find out? Like, thought you were a Christian. You say, well, you better think, yeah, I'm about to suck in you. No, but, I mean, that's the, the, they do that all the time, right? I mean, uh, thought you were saved. Well, because now I, I can't help you, or now I can't do a favor for you, or now because I, you know, I said this or, or did that, I mean, you know, and that's exactly what they're doing to Jesus. Well, if you were here, Jesus, maybe he wouldn't have died. If you were really saved, maybe you wouldn't have to be struggling. You know, I thought I thought your husband was saved now, and you guys are still having marital problems. I thought you know that this was happening, and your kids are acting like this, and I thought you were serving God and reading the Bible and praying, and you still have issues. How's that to be? If you're really saved, if you're really a Christian, Jesus doesn't answer because He knows they're just a bunch of talkers, just like a lot of people in our lives. Verse thirty-eight. Then Jesus, again, groaning in Himself because He's hearing all this, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laid against it. Stop right there for a second. Here He is with Martha, and. She's weeping over her brother. I mean, this is her brother. You know, she's like, oh my God, he died. And who the heck's going to pluck the chickens now? You know, because Mary don't do it. She's like a little diva. She's like, Mary, can you go pluck chickens? She's like, mm, girl, I just got my nails done. I ain't plucking no chickens. So everything's falling on my thigh. I got to pluck chickens. I got to melt the cow. And Lazarus never finished the fence. And, and now she's freaking out. And she's sad. And she's heart's broken. And... Jesus tells her something in the middle of her crying. He says, Then Jesus, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a grave, a, a cave, and a stone laid against it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. And in the middle of her crying, Mary, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Uh, Lord, by this time there's a funk. It says stench, but in our language it's a funk. There's a funk in this. There, Lord, it's been dead for four days. I love my brother and all that stuff, but we do not. It was. It, it, have you ever smelled his feet when he was alive, and now you want to pull him out when he's dead? It's stinky. It's, it's just. Let's just. Let's just put some flowers, Jesus, and we'll see him in heaven. Okay, let's just do that. Jesus says, "Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God?" And he took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out, bound, foot and Gave uh, in grave clothes, and his face was wrapped in cloth. And Jesus said to him, Loose him and let him go. Loose him and let him go. They already gave up on you. Because you had a kid before marriage, or you're getting divorced again, because you went to jail, because of all these things, they already gave up on you. And you come back to God, and you left, and you come back to God, and say, Didn't you already try that? If you were really saved, you wouldn't have gone back. All these things. And Jesus doesn't look at one of what their opinion is of you. Do you understand that? Jesus does not look at what you're worth by someone else's opinion. Because someone else has an opinion of you, good or bad, does not change God's mind of who you are and what you're worth. Because our worth and our everything that's in us was created by Him. And it doesn't matter if you are a drug addict or a pimp or a prostitute or an or, or, or a, a ex-gang member or a con or whatever. Jesus looks past it and says, if you were, believe in me, I'll create something new in you. In front of all these people. 
Because he's groaning for you the same as in your heart. You're saying, I hate it. I hate that you keep looking at me this way. I hate that I've been sober this long and you still look at me as I'm a drug addict. I hate that my marriage fell apart, but now I'm in a good one and you still won't let me live it down. I hate that, that you're still putting the victimization on me that I was molested or, or that I used to suffer with this and suffer with that or my disease or whatever it is. You won't let me out of that box. Because just like when Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead, they still had him bound. And Jesus said, loose him. And all those things are still bounding us up. But Jesus says, I'm going to loosen you from it all. In front of your friends, family, and enemy, I'm going to lift you up. So that why? Not so that you can get patted on the back. Now that's, you can say, oh man, we were just totally wrong about that person. They are awesome. They are productive. They are all these things. He said, but so that God will get the glory. And we wonder why. Why, God, did I have to go through this? Why, God, did I have to sleep on couches with friends? And why did I have to do this? And why did this happen to me? And why is it taking so long? Why did I come to you that day at the altar and ask you to forgive me? And I felt the, the relief of it. And yet I still had to struggle with it over and over and over again. Why? Because he wanted to gather the people around you so that when he freed you, he did it big time in front of everyone. So that nobody could deny it. So that nobody can have the same attitude and the same opinion of you. How do you know she's different? Because I've seen her be different. I didn't hear it from her mom or from her brother who loves her. I was there. I was there when I seen her get the promotion. I was there when I seen the husband just come home and love on her. What? Loving on her? Do you know what she did? Yes! And God raised her back up and put her that the jewel of, her, of his crown. And for him, weren't you a, weren't you a gang member? Weren't you a, a, in, a, in jail? Didn't you have to go through this? And how can you now run a Fortune 500 business? Because God put it back in you. Because God said, I'm going to raise him up. Because God said, you're not dead. When everybody else said you were dead, when everybody else said that you're not going to do it, when everybody else said that you weren't smart and educated enough, when everybody else looked around and pointed their finger and snickered when you went by, God groaned and said, that's my son. God groaned and said, that's my daughter. Don't you dare talk about my daughter like that. Don't you dare have that opinion about my son. Because it's my son and my daughter. You want to see something? Watch me create something in their life. The funeral has been canceled for us. We should have been dead. I'm talking personally. I should have been dead. There was a time when there was depression on me so bad and I had the gun in my mouth and I said, God, if you don't show up right now, I'm done. I'm not doing this another day. And now I stand before you, a, 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 a happy, married father and, and, and my wife and kids respect me and I got to see my son go to school and I got to see my daughter enter high school. Because God said, I'm going to restore you. In front of my in friends, and in front of my family, and in front of the enemy who is waiting for me to do it. You're a loser and you're not going to ever be anything. And now those same people come to me and say, how did you do it? How did you get past it? What happened in your life? Friends from high school come to me and say, man, when you left, when we were making fun of you, when we were talking about you, my life fell apart. I was so nervous to go back to my friends from high school because of every, the, the, the way my life was. And they were all successful. All their parents had businesses. They were on their way to have businesses. And they were all good-looking jocks, everything, everything you think of talent. You know, people were going around and touring and, and playing music and all this stuff. And, and I was the loser of the group. I was like, man, this is you know, and then to go back and, and say, oh, I'm a preacher now. They, preachers aren't really liked. You know, and we ain't the first ones on the list to call when there's a party. I got to have a party back past Diego. And was like, let's have a party. Is Pastor Diego coming? You know, yeah. Is he going to preach? You know, and you, you, you should. So I invite you guys to come to a barbecue when I'm there. And then, was, you know, I come up to the table and everything's like, oh, we're going to pray or something? No, I'm just trying to get some chicken. You know, I was, I was, I was chicken, just trying to sneak in. You know, sometimes I got to send my son in there. You know, because people start talking, they're all laughing and saying their stuff and, and being, being human. 
And then, you know, I walk in and out. <laughs> well, I was going to go to church last week, but, uh, you know, I got Hey, man, it's all right. No, really, my lawn was just out of control. I had to, I had to mow it right then. You don't know how fast my lawn mows. Just, you know, I just got to mow it right then. Brother, it's okay. I just trying to get, trying to get Pepsi and a chicken. That's, that's cool, man. It's, you know, but that's what happens. And so I had to go back. My, my wife said, you know what? I, I feel it in my heart. It's time for you to go back. And I went back. And every single friend of mine, every single friend of mine had some kind of story. They needed prayer. They needed help. They needed some kind of guidance. And Lord said, I sent you back so that I could be glorified in your life to the point where they would say, I thought this was it. But really, I missed a step. And I should be serving God. And I have respect now among my friends. And it's not just for me. It's for everybody here and for everybody watching. Man, the world said you're dead. But God canceled that funeral for you. Throw off those dead man's clothes. Throw off that dead man's opinion of you. Who you are and who you used to be is not the same person. When someone says this, say, I, that's an ex me. That's a used to be me. I used to struggle with that. I used to be addicted to that. But one day I gave my heart to God. And yeah, sometimes it's a two steps, one step back. Two steps, one step back. Sometimes it's like that. Other times we feel like we can walk on water. And then a shark comes and bites you, and you understand, you know. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. That's this the way it is. There's not a there's not a, a, a honest preacher out there that said every day he walks is just perfect, and his wife just loves him every day. It's not true. But what is true is that when you put your faith, heart, love, and trust in God, He creates something new in you. And for those of you that didn't make the mistake yet. For those of you that don't know all the mistakes that I'm talking about, follow the steps of God, follow His commandments, and you won't ever have to experience it. Because some pain, and you can go to any adult, you can go to any person that's been through something, some pain, God's still dealing with. I just talked to a lady, she's been saved for 30 years, and she came to me and she said, you know what, stuff happened to me, decisions I made when I was a kid, it's still there, and I still have to go to the altar and pray and ask God, please help me today, because the pain is really deep, it hurts, and as soon as you think you're over it, one of those people will show up at your doorstep and say, well, you were really saved, and it brings it right back, so you don't have to experience that, I promise you, serve God. For those of you that are on the fence about it, and you're one of those guys that are messing around with whatever, and one of those girls that, that your past keeps getting kicked up in your face, know that that's a dead person. And God canceled the funeral on that. You're created new. Brand new. You're not who the world says you are. You're who God says you are. And we need to act like that. We need to be like that. I, I, I had this friend who had um, a dog. It was a golden retriever. But they had five little dogs. And obviously, if you step towards a little dog, you know, the little chihuahua kind of dogs, they run away. Well, the golden retriever did the same thing because he was hanging out with a bunch of chihuahua dogs. He thought he was a chihuahua dog too. So he would bark just like the rest of them and you'd step toward him. You're like, what are you doing? You're like four or five times huge, more bigger than all the rest of them. And he acted just like them because that's, that's who they told him he was. That's, who that, that's how they treated him. Well, don't let people do that to you. Who cares what they think of you? Who cares what they're trying to paint on you? Go back to this. Go back to this and say, I'm sorry. God has a different plan for me. You can keep your opinion. As a matter of fact, why don't you sit in the front row, I'll give you some popcorn, and you can see what God's going to do in my life. Take notes of all my past. Go ahead. 
write them out. I'll, I'll sit down with you and you can, I'll give you the, the highlights of my, of my bad mistakes. Because one by one you're going to see that God's restoring me. And once a month, once a year, we can have a conference and I'll sit down with you and you can say, Oh, remember you used to be that way? Say, yeah, I used to be. Remember you were divorced five times and blah, 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 whatever. Yeah, it used to be. Remember you and your husband were separated? Mm-hmm. And look at now. He loves me. Look at now. We're, uh, uh, we we got to kind of cut this meeting short because um, we're on our way to Hawaii, another, another family vacation. Yeah, because he got promoted. Oh, that's right. You thought he was just going to be an ex-convict your whole life. That's right. I'm, yeah, but now, now the, the business you said he would never do, yeah, it's, it's just growing, you know, leaps and bounds. And so, yeah, we got to go. Um, it's been nice chatting with you. It really has. You know. uh, I'll get the check because, you know, I know you're a little strapped, you know, for cash. I heard about you and your husband. Um, why don't you come to church? Why don't you come? I'm going to pray with you and help you through your tough time. I mean, that's what God's going to do for you. I'm not being kind of condescending, but He'll do that for you. I don't know how many people, our seniors, our our ministers that were over us telling us, oh, there's so many bad mistakes, you guys aren't doing this, blah, blah, blah. Come to us now. How's your marriage working out? And I'm like, haven't you been married for like 35 years? 40? You've been a pastor for like 40 years. I mean, I'm like, yeah, well, you know. I'm like, oh. So what I'm saying is right. We don't all walk on water. I'm like, well, yeah, but you know, we don't really like talking about pastor faults, you know, behind the pulpit. So, I don't know, I, I missed that class at Bible school. You know, oops, not supposed to say that about the pastor. I don't know. But anyways, I hope that this blessed you. I hope you understand that the funeral that was on your life, because Satan came to kill, steal, and destroy you. He really did. He's going to try to destroy your life. He's going to try to kill you and take everything that was belonging to you. That's his whole objective. But God canceled that. God canceled that on the cross for you and for me. Don't listen anymore to someone's opinion. Unless they're telling you some biblical something. Unless they're opening up and saying, Hey, why don't you turn to James? Or why don't you turn to John? Why don't you turn to this? Because I guarantee that nothing in this Bible, no opinion of the... Because this was written by the Holy Spirit. Okay? So it's written by the Holy Spirit. And His opinion of you will never be condemning to you. And we'll say, once you're divorced, you're done. Once you're a drug addict, you're done. Wrap him up, seal him in the, you know, he's just, he's dead. Forget it. No, Jesus went after the one. He went after the one. If you're the one, he's going after you. With love and with, with hope that you come. That's why he was groaning. He's groaning because of everybody's opinion and everybody's trying to put their stuff on you. And he's groaning right along with you. Don't you see the potential in this person? Instead of helping them, instead of praying with them, instead of gossiping with them about them, that's why he groans. Well, let's let's give God something to, to stop groaning about, and let's come out of our cave rejoicing and being glad that the funeral has been canceled in our lives and in your life. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father God, thank you so much for canceling the funeral in our life. Thank you so much for for changing. Who, we're, who the world thought we were, who the world thought we were supposed to be because of our past mistakes. Father God, I thank you. I love you. In Jesus' name.